Today we are going to examine the eternal battle between good and evil taking place on a daily basis out at sea. I'm talking, of course, about dolphins versus sharks. We'll get to it on this episode of our Dolphin Academy vlog. One of the most exciting elements of accompanying these dolphins out to sea is the unpredictability of it all. Yes, here on Curacao, we are surrounded by one of the most productive coral reef habitats of all the Caribbean. Corals and sea life of every species imaginable. It's always a treat to see the dolphins interacting within this environment. You just never know what you might witness out here. What about sharks? Yes, the shark, demon of the deep, soulless creature with dead eyes, a mindless eating machine. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Contrast that with the dolphin, aquatic angels with supernatural powers and transcendent consciousness. Stinking dolphins. Dolphins? Yeah, they think they're so cute. Oh, look at me, I'm a flipping little dolphin. Let me flip for you. I know something. <laughs> okay, to be sure, there are exaggerations on both ends, but in a confrontation between a shark and a dolphin, who wins? Check out this clip from a 1975 ocean documentary series, The Coral Jungle, hosted by Mr. Spock himself. Let's watch what he described as rare footage of a struggle between a shark and a dolphin. Okay, we have a dolphin there, jumping. Oh, there's a shark, and the shark's on the bottom. I guess the dolphin's looking at the shark. There's another jump, and the shark again. And they're both opening their mouths. Dolphin's coming close, and oh! Boom. Two hits. And that's it. I saw this documentary in the 80s and remember thinking that a lot of those shots looked kind of familiar. That's because I'd seen them before. A lot. When I was a kid growing up, Flipper was on television uh, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, even though it's an old 60s TV show, it was in syndication, which meant that it was on every day after school all over America. I think I've seen every one of them. I had several conversations with the man who actually filmed all those sequences for Flipper, Jordan Klein. In the 90s, I was training dolphins in Roatan, Honduras, and worked with Mr. Klein on two different film projects. Go back and check out our vlog number seven. He had amazing stories from his pioneering work in the 60s and told me how he filmed those shark scenes. I'll give examples of what he said as we look at this specific sequence from a Flipper episode. You will notice that even though it's a single scene, it isn't even the same shark in each shot. It's often not even the same size or species. It switches back and forth between a tiger shark and a black tip reef shark. Oh, and in almost all of the shots, the shark isn't even alive. It was too risky to put a live shark on camera with the child actor or the dolphin, so the crew would manipulate a dead shark. There are divers off camera using a fishing line to jerk the shark's body back and forth in front of the camera, creating the illusion it is swimming. What about when the dolphin makes contact? I mean, even though the shark's dead, isn't it a little morbid to train a dolphin to punch a corpse? Don't worry. According to Mr. Klein, the dolphin in those close-up shots isn't even real. It's a fake, life-size rubber dolphin. One diver pushes the dead shark out in front of the camera, and then the other diver punches it with the fake dolphin. 
Notice the dolphin's mouth is never fully closed on the hits. That's the rubber dolphin with the permanently slightly open mouth. Go ahead, run it back, and see for yourself. In the newer Flipper TV series of the 90s, they didn't even bother to create a new dolphin shark punch. They just recycled the 30-year-old footage from the 60s. Anyway, that a boy, Copan. In the 90s, big feature films that played in movie theaters uh, had a bigger budget than TV shows, so they didn't have to recycle old footage. They built robots. Here's the fight scene in the 96 Flipper movie. It's pretty impressive animatronics for its time, but still looks kind of silly. So why didn't these filmmakers just go out to sea and film a fight between a shark and a dolphin? I mean, there's dozens of documentaries. There must be tons of footage, but there isn't. Not a single shot of a dolphin uh, fighting a shark. Now, there's lots of shots of sharks attacking and sometimes eating dolphins, but never in reverse. Now, there is footage of orcas attacking sharks, and of course, orcas are technically big dolphins, but no footage of a medium to small size dolphin, bottlenose dolphin, flipper dolphin, attacking sharks. These dolphins don't fight sharks. If they did, it would pretty much be a lose-lose situation for them. Facing a ridiculously agile, lightning-fast mouth full of razor-sharp teeth, a dolphin is at an extreme disadvantage against a shark, and they know it. So how do they defend themselves from a shark? They bolt, scram, skedaddle, get out of dodge. They run away, fast. Even if an aggressive shark is much smaller than them. There's more of that footage. Check it out on their channel in the link down below. When we are out at sea, how do the Academy Dolphins react when they see a shark? The exact same way. Look at this reaction the moment Taylor is aware of a shark. There goes Annie. Notice they're scanning and see the split second they realize the danger. Where are they going? Straight back to their habitat at Dolphin Academy. And there they go again, leaving together during another dive. On occasion, we are able to see the shark too but they often don't care much for our cameras. With their echolocation, a dolphin can tell a small shark from 150 meters away, well beyond the visual range of a diver. So obviously, their best defense is sonar. That's why they are continuously scanning in all directions up and down the reef. But what if a dolphin is surrounded or, or cornered? Uh, in that case, would they potentially punch a shark with their snout? Even though the general consensus is that ramming is common, there isn't a shred of evidence for it. No one's documented it. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments below. I've seen plenty of skirmishes between dolphins before, and some of them are quite violent. I have seen them use their rostrum to poke or slap, but in my 30 plus years of studying dolphins in both the wild and in human care, I've never seen a head-on ram. Their go-to moves are generally biting, slapping with their tail, we call that fluking, and full-on cross-body checks. Machu is going to help show why ramming is just a bad idea. Okay, this is uh, Machu working with us right now. Now we're going to talk about his beak. We call it the rostrum. Uh, the upper part is the maxilla, the lower part is the mandible, and it's made of bone. Of course, there's a bony skeleton under there, and it's pretty hard. Uh, but as it tapers backwards to the back of the lower jaw, it gets quite thin. We'll have a look inside in just a moment. But the idea of a dolphin hitting something with his, four, four, his full weight, 180 kilos behind that, he's running the risk of fracturing it, especially the thin part in the back. So he's not going to be punching head on. Look at this CT scan, and you can see just how thin the base of that lower jaw is. For one more clip, let's see how these two dominant males, Romeo and Machu, react to a very small, insignificant little nurse shark.
So there you have it. A myth that was born out of a fake confrontation from a television script has somehow made its way into animal documentaries, popular culture, and these days, even the internet. Don't believe me? Just type in dolphin, rams, shark, and you'll see what I mean. So why make a big deal out of all of this? Because myths, whether they're old or new, large or small, they just get in the way of truth. So in closing, the earth isn't flat and dolphins don't ram sharks. But let's put this myth away with a little bit of fun. Let's have one last look at Flipper's greatest hits.